Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bokor, your host for this episode, where I'm going to follow a few news stories. Thanks very much for taking the time to join me, and let me get right into some of the stories that I'll talk about today. Now, first story today is about Polestar 2. They've been doing a lot of stuff, and they actually uh, released a single motor variant of the Polestar 2 recently, which is now uh, going to be coming to Canada as well. Uh, it'll offer about 426 kilometers of range uh, with a 170 kilowatt motor, uh, giving about 243 pound-feet of torque and 228 horsepower, so certainly adequate enough for a vehicle of that size. Um, they also will qualify for provincial incentives here in Canada with a starting price of 49.9 Canadian. You can check your local areas for what the price is. Still have the dual range all-wheel drive version, of course, out there, and everything comes uh, with a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack from Polestar. So, Good that they're offering that. They're also offering an optional heat pump now for 2022 model year, especially in cold weather climates. That will help uh, increase range up to 10%, depending on usage. Um, so good. Deliveries in Canada have actually started now. I've actually seen a couple on the road recently in the last couple of weeks. So congratulations on Polestar for that. I'm glad that they are bringing a lower cost variant to the marketplace to help expand EV adoption. Next story is about Mazda. So the Mazda MX-30 is now coming to North America and it's arriving in Canada as well. Now the Mazda MX-30 is an interesting animal and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, on this show because as I mentioned, I will do a review. But it does have a 35.5 kilowatt hour battery pack and it is liquid thermal, thermal cooled and managed. Um, it produces about almost 81 kilowatts of power on a single motor. It's front wheel drive only. 143 horsepower with about 200 pound-feet of torque, which is certainly enough to get it up and going. It's certainly not a rocket. Handles quite well, though, uh, and that's one of my experiences from the taking it on a test track, is the handling was actually quite well. Now, it does only support 40 kilowatt CCS fast charging as a max, and 6.6 .6 kilowatt for AC charging for level 1 and 2. The caveat with this is it's got a range of 100 miles, 161 kilometers, and that is EPA rated, so I don't know exactly what I'll get until I try it. Uh, a couple of trims available on this, the GS and the GT. Mazda is positioning their first all-electric entry as a commuter vehicle, as somebody who lives in an urban city that's using this vehicle for day-to-day -day getting back and forth to work, where 100 miles or 160 kilometers of top-end range is going to be more than adequate to get you back and forth with, you know, with some creature comforts. So I'm not going to spend, again, a lot of time on this vehicle because I'll have a full review uh, coming up in the, in the next few weeks. But I am glad to see that it's finally come to Canada. I know that it's been available in the UK and parts of Europe for, uh, for several months now. So good to see it here in North America. And I can't wait to get my hands on it for a longer trial. Lucid has reached another milestone with their Air uh, on the Air Dream product. They've actually started production uh, over the last couple of weeks of these, and they're starting first customer deliveries at the end of this month in October. Now, they have two factories going on the Lucid Air, both in Casa Grande, Arizona, and they have received over 13,000 reservations for different Air variants. Now, Air variants, excuse me. Now, I thought the numbers would be a bit higher, but that's what I could pick out from some of the press releases, uh, which is okay. Now, the first 520 units will be the Dream Edition, which is the top end at 160,000 plus US. So, uh, not too many people are going to be driving those, especially here in Canada, if, if any. But uh, one of the things about them is that they they are now the highest EPA rated range vehicles in the all electric market space, coming in at a whopping 520 miles or 836 kilometers. That's outstanding. That beats the Tesla Model S long range too, the new one. So um, good to see. I mean, that's a that's a ton of mileage. You'll be spending some money though on it. As I mentioned, the Dream Edition is very expensive, and the base air will start at just over 77,000 US pricing. No other pricing has been. Uh, stated yet on Canadian or other currencies, but you can kind of figure that out where you live. So just I'm glad to see Lucid's finally taken that next milestone, getting, getting into series production now, and I wish them all the best. Quick update from Atlas. Now, you know, you folks have, know I've been following these guys for quite some time. And over the last couple of years, they've basically just been, been coming out with conceptual drawings and images and video and things like that, which have all been concept-based. Well, they've reached a, a very important milestone as well in revealing their prototype XT pickup truck. And I watched that reveal. And in fact, um, I uh, will be uh, speaking to their CEO 
uh, very shortly doing an audio, doing another show specifically for them. So I won't spend a lot of time on the specs here because I will cover that on another on a future episode. Um, but this is a vehicle that's designed from the ground up on their own platform, their own architecture, which is skateboard-based design, and their own battery cell technology, as they call the um, uh, AVC, if I've got that correct, uh, cells. Uh, partnering with, I, I forget who they're partnering with on the actual cells, uh, but everything is in-house and, and built. Now they've got a prototype that they've revealed, of course, which is the alpha prototype. It's the first step in the series, uh, in the production elements to before they can get into full production. Really good specs, you know, four independent motors, 600 plus horsepower, 12,000 uh, foot-pounds of torque, uh, 250 kilowatt hours or higher battery pack options, um, three, 300 to 500 mile ranges. Um, you know, well, they offer this really quick charging with their proprietary charging for zero to 100%. Yes, you heard me, zero to 100% in 15 minutes at a whopping 1.5 megawatt charging rate. That's megawatt. We're not talking 350 kilowatts. We're talking 1.5 megawatts. That's amazing. And I can definitely see the fleet applications for this. Um, and all kinds of other specs, huge towing capacities, payload capacities, and, and somewhat. So I'm really excited to see Atlas take that, that really important step. They're in the final throes of a, of a funding campaign right now, um, uh, selling stock options and things like that to, to garner more funds. So I look forward to speaking to the CEO coming up soon and to providing a full, uh, more in-depth information on the Atlas uh, company and their offering very soon. Now, staying with a lot of manufacturers that are doing EV plans, a Jeep under the Stellantis company has now uh, announced a plug-in hybrid electric chip model of their Cherokee, which has been around for a long time. And this is basically the same type of uh, EV infrastructure that I talked about in my Jeep Rubicon 4XE review. You can go back and look for that. It's basically the same underpinnings there. Um, it's 40 kilometer range, 25 mile, all electric, that kind of stuff. So decent enough for you know some day-to-day -day driving we'll have to see but i am again glad that they're taking a pinnacle product like the jeep brand and, and their their marquee uh, products within those brands and adding some electrification where, where i know that full electrification is coming in later on this decade um, but you know it'll have very good um uh, uh Power and torque ratings, 375 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque. Because of that Quadra 2 4x4 systems that Jeep is known for, it'll have pretty capable off-road capabilities, along with 6,000-pound towing um, and all kinds of other stats. So you can go to check it out. Now, these are going to be available in early 2022, um, according to what Jeep has sent me. So I do wish them all the best, and I look forward to getting one of these next uh, quarter, early next year in the winter or in their early spring to uh, test drive and provide a review on, which I will. So uh, keep your eyes, and if you keep your watching Jeep, if you're interested in this product, for more information. Switch gears over to overseas for a sec. The Cooper brand has started manufacturing of the Born uh, trim model in Germany, and that's a pretty exciting step for Cooper. Um, now, it's the first all-electric Born model that will be built at the Zwickau Volkswagen plant in Germany, where that plant is all-electric now. It's only producing electric vehicles um, alongside with the ID3s, the ID4s from Volkswagen, the Audi Q4 e-trons and the Q4 uh, e-tron sportbacks as well. All of them are based on the MEB platform from VW Group, including this vehicle. Now, it's a very similar in size and stature to the ID3, uh, roughly around 110 to 150 kilowatts of rear engine uh, output, a uh, rear power, excuse me. Uh, it's got three battery options on this uh, born model from Cupra, a 45 kilowatt hour, a 58, and a 77 kilowatt. These are all usable stats. Um, and it should give the Cooper a range of anywhere from 340 to 540 kilometers. And this, I would I guess, would be um, any DC uh, range or WLT. LWTP, one of them. EPA would probably be a bit lower. Uh, the, in Germany, the pricing is very competitive, starting at about 37,200 euros. Uh, but after all the environmental bonuses and rebates, you can get that down as low as 27,000 and change euros. So pretty compelling product for the price point. Uh, in Spain, the pricing will be around 31,600 euros uh, for the more powerful 
uh, version as well with with a few dollars more. It's going to go on sale next month, so production has started, which is great, as I mentioned. Uh, and the and the Cooper and Sayat will build future EVs as well at other plants, including uh, Martorell in Spain. Um, and from 2025, they want to ramp up production to about 500,000 electric cars per year uh, under the various VW Group brands um, just in in that plant, in addition to the Swickow and other plants that are wrapping up. So good to see you know VW and the VW Group continuing to um, put their money where their mouth is because they put a lot of money over the last few years. You've heard me make many, many stories about VW. They're, you know, that money is now paying off where cars are actually coming off the assembly line. They're being built and they're being sold in Europe and, and other parts of the of the world. And uh, Cooper as well announced that they're going to be all electric by 2030 as a brand. So good to see, good to see these steps happening and uh, continue to follow it. And if anybody gets one, I'd love for you to send me an email with uh, your thoughts on that. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And another company I've been following is Lordstown. They've had some financial woes where it seems like they've, they're going to be salvaged because Foxconn has agreed uh, to partner and uh, buy their car plant for Lordstown Motors in Lordstown in, in, in Ohio, where it's based. Um, they're going to take over production of the electric pickup truck, the Endurance, for Lordstown Motors. And Foxconn, we know, knows how to manufacture things. And they are seriously getting into the electric car business as well globally. So this is another step for them. Um, Lordstown estimates that they're receiving about $230 million for the sale of this plant. And then this new partnership will allow Foxconn and Lordstown to move to, uh, you know, Fox to build these Lordstown endurance vehicle pickup trucks and for Lordstown to move to a less capital intensive business model. Um, and this deal is supposed to close in the next six months. So there's still life in, in Lordstown, which is good because I want these people to succeed. So continue to follow them. And if you do a, re a reservation for one of the endurance pickup trucks, I'd love for you to reach out to me and let me know what they're telling you. Uh, because I, I don't have one, so I won't get that info, but it'd be interesting to see what they're telling you. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks for tuning in to catch some of the stories I've been following. I uh, appreciate everybody watching on YouTube, of course, and with all the comments, keep them coming. If you haven't subscribed, please do. would love it if you did. Always humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. I give you thanks, and you're in the end credits on every show that I do. Check out below the link, and you can get more information if you feel like supporting me through Patreon. Um, and of course, everybody continue to follow the EV revolution that's going on out there. Lots of stuff happening. Stay safe, stay healthy. We're still going through some stuff, so continue to watch out for that. And final thanks to those viewers uh, and the watchers who helped me out on my Get Loud um, Sick Kids campaign that happened throughout the month of September. I exceeded my goal, uh, my uh, pledge goal, and I thank you. Just again, want to thank you very much. I'm very humbled by uh, the support that I got to reach that goal for the monies that went directly to Sick Kids Hospital here in Toronto. It's a very, very worthwhile cause. So thanks again for that. And I think that's about it I have on the agenda today. So until the next episode, everybody stay safe and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.